Hey, what's up, everybody? Yellow Turtle here with my co-host, Beef. Welcome to another episode of Deluxo Fam Podcast, brought to you by Keys. Deluxo Fam Podcast is meant to be a short and informational show where we provide some takes on the latest Luxo news in the space. Today, we will be recapping the Luxo X Boys Club Old Money Party from New York City Fashion Week from this past Thursday, and also touching on some events at DAPCON Berlin. But before we get into all this, Beef, how are you today? What up, what up? Super, super happy. A lot of stuff happening in the Luxo world. Just a lot of stuff in general, I guess, happening in crypto. But uh, real good stuff. Looking forward to our, our chat. Uh, yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's been a little rainy here. We had some flash flooding over the last couple of days. Um, but other than that, it's it's going pretty good. It's going pretty good here. Yeah, I bet you're still running off that high from going to the Boys Club Luxo old money party. Oh, Yeah, I would be. So kind of talking about that. Do you want to kind of break down how it went and give us an overview of, of like what happened? Come on, spill the beans. Yeah, I guess I can spill the beans a bit. So the Old Money Party was a private event in Midtown Manhattan at a private home, which I honestly, ha- I mean, maybe I'm just uncultured, but I, I didn't realize that there were like legit homes and houses in the middle of New York. I really just thought it was all apartment buildings. So it was at this Beautiful, beautiful venue, four floors, free martinis, free Aperol spritzes, beautiful rooftop garden that you could go hang out. And it was mostly just like a social kind of networking event. There was a DJ, but there wasn't really a dance floor or people dancing. It was more of just kind of, you know, casually drinking, having conversation, kind of figuring out why people were there and what they were interested in. I would say for the majority, a lot of people were there because of Boys Club. And less on the, the Luxo heavy side, which is awesome, right? Because we get to pink pill a bunch of people. So that was really nice. Uh, a lot of big names there, I got to say. You know, right away, we saw Sarah from the Luxo team, Crypto's Chick on Twitter. We also saw Marjorie right away, the three founders from Boys Club, which is really nice. Got to talk to them for a little bit. And then David Phelps, too, which I was pretty surprised to see him there and I had a brief conversation with him. Sage was getting out there and chatting with everyone for a while as well. So we ended up splitting up um, between the two of us and kind of tackling the crowd individually. It was just a great time. The vibes were so good, very positive. Everyone was happy to be there. The drinks were great. The food was great. Music was great. Yeah, it was just an overall amazing time. Happy to have, you know, got the opportunity to go. Shout out to Sarah again from the Luxo team for getting us on the list. Um, she made that happen. And then Sage and I took the three and a half hour drive down to New York City and the rest was history. It was, it was a great time. Is All there right, anything man. in particular that you want to know? Uh, yeah, I want to know your pink pill body count. How many people do you pink pill? <laughs> <laughs> I would say almost everyone that I talked to, right? I mean, the, the typical conversation to have is, you know, what brings you here? Are you on the Luxo side or the boys club side? And like I said, most people were on the boys club side. And it was honestly like some of the people's first time ever hearing the words about Luxo. So, you know, I got asked the question of like, why are you so interested in Luxo? You know, how did you hear about it? How long have you been in this space? And my answer to most of them was, you know, after reading about the standards, working closely with Boost on the LSPs of the week, and also just working with Boost over time on the last hackathon, the standards, the LSPs that the Luxo team have created are simply amazing, right? And for lack of better words, they are intuitive. They make sense from an outside non-technical perspective. The analogy that they are Lego blocks that can be put together to build different use cases is one that we haven't really seen before. The team has been thinking outside of the box and thinking about the future of this space for several years and to and thinking about ideas like account abstraction and digital identity uh, and security in the blockchain space that people are just now coming around to. And also to add on to that, the user experience and the user interface. I just saw a clip of a talk from 2015 where a smart contract developer from, I believe, the Ethereum community was talking about 
that we will we will not see mass adoption in this space until we have the user experience to adhere or to appease appeal to the average user. And the average user is a group of people. It's not just one person. And I really believe that Luxo has, you know, taken that idea and really ran with it for the last several years. I mean, just look at the dematerialized and the ability to use Apple Pay to receive to buy an NFT, which automatically gets sent to your universal profile. You don't have to have your seed phrase. You don't have to sign gas fees. You don't have to do all this, all these things that deter people from using the blockchain from the very get go. Uh, so Luxo, you know, has taken these ideas into consideration. They've really brought them forth into their product. And we'll talk about this a little bit later, but, you know, we can see this with the first release of the universal profile browser extension beta. It's very, it looks very clean, very easy. The team is very proud of it. So I think, you know, I pink pilled a lot of people and I'm just, you know, really reinforced that they have an amazing team who works insanely hard and very, very intelligent people that are working to make the blockchain space an easier space to navigate. And I've, you know, hopefully that got a lot of people, but that was my basic spiel, I guess. Oh man, you, you delivered the pink pills to me. I was just looking for a body count, but you just force fed them to me and I was willing and taking it. Wow. That's going to be taken out of context, but <laughs> talking about the rest of the party, did you learn anything about future, future aspects of the collaboration between boys club and Luxo? Yeah. So Sage actually got to talk to the boys club founders for quite a while. And it seems like there'll be more IRL events coming from boys club and Luxo in the future. The, the tentative number at the moment was four, four more events in the upcoming year to celebrate this partnership, to get the word out about Luxo, to get the word out about Boys Club. As many of you probably know, they held a party in, in Paris at ECC as well, which I heard was absolutely amazing. People at the party in New York kept asking me, they're like, Are, were you from the Paris party? And I was like, no, I wish. So somebody out there apparently is my doppelganger and I'm looking to meet you at one of these parties mm -hmm. someday. But yeah, four, four parties, they're mostly focusing, it seems like, on IRL events. So staying out of the, the metaverse VR space, which is totally fine with us because we hope to you know, take that area by storm over here at Keys with our different podcasts, with the Pink Pill, the Wrap Up, and the LuxoFam podcast. We hope to kind of corner this market of, of VR activity. So we we're very happy to hear that. And it seems like there's a lot of openness between projects and between partnerships to kind of work together to help us all succeed. I think that, you know, people could have seen this as a potential keys killer, right? A huge DAO with a huge following coming onto Luxo, but I really don't feel that way at all. I was so excited for this partnership and then meeting the people from the team, talking with them and just kind of seeing the vibes of the overall space. It seems like we'll be collaborating and working together in more and more ways coming into the future, which makes me super, super excited for what's to come, both IRL and in the metaverse, multiverse, whatever you want to call it. Or overall, I just, you know, super excited and it was really just a great event and to put like faces to names and actually meet these people and, and talk with them for a little bit, you know, really warmed my heart because they're such amazing people that really care and really care about genuine like interactions between humans. It's not just for show, you know, they're, they're in no way where it was anyone, um, not who they show on the, on, as on their online presence. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm really happy that you guys got to go. Um, jealous. I know I've said that before. I mean, you guys were snapping pics with the queen. Marjorie was there. You know, you guys taking pics with her. And man, you know, like that's, it's really cool. So. Oh yeah. Not, not to flex, but this is now not one, but two parties that Marjorie has come up to me and she comes up to me and goes, turtle man. <laughs> so that she is. recognized me and oh God, that warms my heart. It was, it's awesome. It makes me that feel like I made it. Super dope. Super dope. I can't wait until she can yell beef. <laughs> Hell yeah. One day, man. One day. <laughs> One day. All right. You want to you wanna dive into our next topic here? Yeah, absolutely. So the Luxo team is sponsoring or a sponsor at DAPCON Berlin this week. So do you want to kind of dive into a little bit about that? 
Yeah, it's uh, it's a pretty big conference in their home of Berlin. So that's there's a nice benefit there. It looked like from the post because it, it they did do a speech today or Stephen Horvath, I believe that's how you say it, did a speech today where he kind of unwrapped building the next generation of D apps on top of the LSPs and universal profiles. So from what we've seen so far, I haven't watched the full presentation, but he's kind of highlighting different projects that have been built on it, like universal page and kind of discussing, you know, how they're harnessing the LSPs. And then he showed upturn project where Upturn released a video showing how easy it is to mint LSP7 assets. Yeah, kind of like cultural currencies. So from what I've seen so far, it looks pretty awesome. I love that they're now actually showing legitimate use cases that are being built, showing these beautiful UI UX pictures of the universal profile and breakdowns of kind of, you know, what's in them. You can see like controllers, it looks like a beautiful hybrid between a Web 2 experience and upgrading it up, upgrading it to the Web 3 experience. Yeah, just really excited to watch the full, full takeaway, the full speech that Steven did. What did you, what did you take from it so far? Yeah, so one thing I'd really like to highlight is, you know, how much they're focusing on kind of teaching these developers and showing them the different use cases for the universal profile. So like over the past month, they've probably, this is probably the fourth or fifth, maybe even sixth talk by one of their smart contract developers, or I guess Bianca is head of developer relations, but people in the smart contract realm teaching other developers about universal profiles, what makes them different, why are they useful? Why is it easy to use? And you know, why this transition from typical EOA accounts to account abstracted smart contract based accounts is the way of the future. I think that's really important. I mean, tomorrow they're going to be doing the first Luxo meetup at the quote Luxo hub, which I know we speculated on before, but I'm, I'm excited to see the, the details that come out of that. But again, it's just a developer focused meetup where they're teaching people how to use the universal profiles, how to integrate them into dApps. And that essentially is just a workshop for developers to learn more about how to use the Luxo standard. So they're really pushing for developers to start using this and start creating because the world is kind of their oyster, right? They, they can create these different use cases that you know we haven't seen yet. So I'm very excited to see the ideas that come out of that, especially leading up to the hackathon as well. I think that you know, getting the LSPs in the ears of these developers and then, you know, in a month or two, adding pretty significant prize money on top of it for them to go build uh, use cases and build dApps that hopefully will turn into full-fledged full fledged projects in the future. I think that's one of the most exciting things about all of this developer talk lately in the space. Even though I'm non-technical and it goes over my head, I see the value, the there's tremendous, tremendous value in what they're doing. So it's, it's very exciting. You know, touching on value in, in the meetup, it looks like they actually announced today that they'll be live streaming it. So that might be pretty cool. So we'll be able to check that out, you know, in real time and see what they're doing. And again, hopefully it'll serve as a nice example for people who are curious and who are builders in the space to kind of see what they're doing, you know, the basics, if they're going over that. Yeah, that'll be really helpful for them. Yeah, that'll be cool. I hopefully they take or that they're watching the chat of the live stream too, because I'd love to ask questions and try to get involved, even though I'm not in Berlin. That would be nice. Yeah, that would be cool. So uh, Luxo kind of took a unorthodox but refreshing stance um, <laughs> to kind of their presence at the dev. DAPCON Berlin um, event. What did they do? Yeah, so Luxo set up a juice stand outside for, you know, for people to refresh themselves and, you know, get a quality drink <laughs> while they're at the DAPCON <laughs> event, which, you know, at first glance, it's like, oh, that has nothing to do with their project, blah, blah, blah. 
I think it's a great idea. I really do. It's it's unorthodox. It's kind of like a dare to be different. You know, if I were there, I would love a nice, freshly squeezed juice of some sort. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're talking about Luxo. I also think it shows that they're not a traditional tech team. Any event that I've gone to that's been Luxo related has never felt like a tech event. It's felt much more than that. It's welcoming. It's inviting. People are willing to talk to you. Ask your opinion. Ask for your feedback on, you know, what you think about their approaches to certain things. You know, when we were at the old money party, some of the team was asking us, like, how do you think the community here is perceiving Luxo? Because, you know, a lot of for a lot of people, it was their first time hearing about Luxo. Like they really care about the user experience, the community feel inside and outside of the, the tech world. Right. They want to be welcoming. They want people to feel like they're part of this community and that, you know, they're welcome. And then that carries over into how they want their user to feel when they use their actual product, right? They want it to be easy. They don't want the user to be frustrated. They want the user, they don't want the user to be nervous every time they make a transaction. Because if you're anything like me, every single time I sign a transaction with my MetaMask, it takes probably a year and a half off my life. And that's being conservative. <laughs> so I think that I think that they really care about how people feel. Because they know that if you know people are happy and they feel welcomed and they feel comfortable with the space that they're in, then they're going to learn more about the project. They're going to learn more about the product and they're going to learn uh, and do more with it, right? They're going to want to use on-chain activity, do on-chain activities for a multitude of reasons at the end of the day, like security and transparency and the ability to you know, own your own data and things like that but they won't do it unless they feel comfortable. And so, you know, again, harping on the point that the user experience needs to be better all around in the Web3 space. We know that they've taken that to heart and they continue to show that. It's not something that they just, they, they don't just talk the talk, they also walk the walk. And I think this is an example of them walking the walk. Although, again, it may seem a little weird that they have a juice stand, I think it's them taking the effort, taking the the step that they didn't have to take to make their community feel more welcome. Yeah, I definitely think that there's a technique to that, too. I mean, who doesn't love a good smoothie or a juice, you know, and then you're drinking it, you're getting the positive endorphins reinforcing, you know, your curiosity for Luxo, you know, so maybe them simply just giving out these juices or smoothies made more people attend their their uh, meetings overall. You know, I definitely think that that would be a result for me. It would make me more curious, giving me, you know, something like a fresh smoothie right in the morning unexpectedly. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And it it was funny. I saw a picture of one of the smart contract developers (laughs) outside of the juice stand. And the caption was, when you're a smart contract developer, but the marketing team wants you to take a picture. (laughs) I just thought that was so funny. (laughs) So the last bit of uh, news that we've got is kind of big news. What just got released uh, within the past day or so? Yeah, so as we mentioned at the beginning of the episode that we said that we would touch on later is the Universal Profile Browser Extension Beta Release. That is a mouthful, but it is very, very exciting news. We got a browser extension on the L16 testnet last summer for the hackathon. It was amazing to work with. I really, really enjoyed it. It seemed very easy to integrate. There was obviously a few bugs because it was on a testnet, but now with the new beta release, they're trying to work out those bugs and kind of gauge, you know, how it's working with the community as more people come online and come to use it. I've seen a few people have some issues, but, you know, in their documentation for downloading it, they still say that it is for, it is developer focused at this moment. So not to worry for people who are non-technical, if you don't understand, if there's some, some hiccups or some hurdles to jump through, I'm sure that will all be uh, smoothed out in the future. I know I haven't tried it yet because it's only been a day since it's released, but you know, myself and the people at Keys plan to create a little short walkthrough video starting from scratch from a non-technical perspective of how to get your browser extension online, how to edit it, how to you know, set it up and everything like that. So that when time comes for the actual release of the alpha version, then everyone will be ready to have their universal profiles online, which is very, very exciting. 
Oh yeah, super exciting. And those videos will be greatly appreciated too and, and serve further as more example of the ease of use and UI UX of the up. So super excited about that. And it was released on Fabian's birthday. Happy birthday, Fabian. The goat, happy the wizard. Birthday. <laughs> Should we break down a happy birthday song for like 30 seconds now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if the listeners would enjoy that. <laughs> All right. Well, that brings us to the end of the show, all the topics that we wanted to cover this week. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. It helps us create more of these videos. We really appreciate the Luxo fam and the Keys community supporting us uh, along this journey. So, Beef, if you want to sign us off. Yeah. Should I continue the, the trend I did last time I signed off or just no? No, I don't think I will. You know what? We'll just leave Gary in the past. But <laughs> as always, remember, everybody, None of this is financial advice. It's just a couple of dudes talking about what we love. Happy birthday, Fabian. Happy birthday.